Hello everyone. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to use something like this uh, with Reaper and well with just about any doll really. But uh, so this is the MIDITECH Garage Key Groove. It is a small USB MIDI controller and this is the important thing. I want everybody to pay attention if you don't know how to use these things. These are keys, pads, sliders or faders, knobs and then some buttons. Okay, and this is going to come in later because I'm not going to keep showing the picture and say press pad 1 or whatever. You've got to just know keys, pads, faders, sliders, knobs, and some buttons. And then a little bit of German if you're nasty. Okay, so when you uh, install this on Windows, wait until it's completely installed and you get the little window uh, up here that says, you know, everything installed, okay? Then you're going to pop open Reaper, and the first thing you're going to do is open up the audio settings. And this is because by default, Reaper disables any new MIDI devices that you attach to the computer. So you'll find your device. Uh, in my case, it's the Garage Key Groove. Yours might be the Akai MPK25 or any other uh, USB uh, or, yeah, any other USB uh, or MIDI controller. And you're going to double click it and you want to enable input that means all your keys and pads will actually be sending information to the computer and you want to enable input for control messages and I'll explain a little bit what that means later. You'll notice down here that the MIDI outputs uh, that the garage key groove is disabled and for our purposes that's fine because uh, MIDI controllers don't actually make any sound themselves. All the hard work is done in the computer all the all the MIDI keyboard is doing is sending information to the computer and then the computer does everything. So uh, this is enabled plus control, this is disabled, apply, you're good to go. Alright, so um, what we're going to try first is we're just going to open up uh, Contact 5 Player by Native Instruments. Uh, it's a free, uh, it's free, it's pretty powerful and you can download it from the Native Instruments website. Uh, so when you open it up, it'll look like this. Pretty boring, nothing going on. So let's add an instrument. Uh, let's start with the lead retro mono. Okay, double click on that. It'll pop up here, you can see. You should be able to hear it through the speakers. Okay, so it works fine. Uh, you'll notice if you push the pads, as you can hear me slamming on my pads, that nothing's happening. And that's because uh, typically uh, MIDI devices are set up so that anything that uses percussion or drums is on MIDI channel 10. And this is MIDI channel 1. So you can press this, the keys, and you get sound. You press the pads, and you get no sound. If we add, let's go to uh, band, pop kit. Okay, this is a uh, drum machine. Uh, well, that didn't really help at all, did it? <laughs> this is a drum machine, you can see here. And when you press on the keys, you get the synthesizer. But when you press on the pads, Hey, you don't get anything and why is that because like like um, many many devices the pads are set up for drums and drums are percussion they're on channel 10 so all you have to do is set your channel to MIDI channel 10 and you've got your drums So easy peasy. You got your drums, you got your synthesizer, and that's your pads and your keys all sorted out. Now, not every MIDI controller is going to be set up in the same way. Uh, you'll have to read your manual or check out the internet. And for example, with this uh, Garage Key Groove, I have a PC editor, and I can actually change the channels and the octaves and everything about this MIDI controller uh, outside of Reaper in a regular uh, Windows program. So, 
let's talk about the sliders and knobs. And if you'll remember, sliders, knobs. All right. So if you look here, this is the volume for the uh, retro mono synthesizer. And that's me using the slider, the number one slider. Now that's because uh, Native Instruments has built a professional grade uh, uh, software here and it follows MIDI, impl uh, MIDI implementation correctly and my number one knob is directly related to this. Um, however, you can remove that if you'd like. Uh, I'm not sure how to do it on contact but I'm certain you can. Uh, but let's try uh, slider 2 and if you look here nothing changes slider 3 nothing changes slider 4 nothing changes but check out knob 1 nothing look here at knob 2 knob 2 controls my panning okay knob 3 we got nothing knob 4 we got nothing so we have 6 out of 8 free knobs and sliders available for our use but what can you do with those Listen to this. Listen to this. Okay, that is the cutoff for the filter. Now, you can do that with your mouse and do this every time. But you, there is a more elegant solution, and that is to use your knobs or your sliders. And all you do is you move it a little bit, okay? And then if you want it to go back to where it was before so that it's uh, the same, you just control Z. Then there are actually two ways that we can do this. The first way is to right click on cutoff. And this is specific to contact player. You can tell it to learn. However, because Reaper is an awesome, awesome program, Reaper can learn anything, anything that you can move here on the screen you can tell Reaper to assign to a knob or a fader or a button or whatever you have on your uh, MIDI controller. So if we move this cutoff, okay, then we click parameter, learn, and inside the command all you do is click inside and then you move the fader or the knob, this is the knob, CC9, you can see these are control changes. This is why you enabled them in the earlier. Okay, but let's put it on this. Uh, let's see, my second slider here is control uh, change 43. Okay, we'll click OK. And now, if you look here at my cutoff, it is moving without any use, without using the mouse. That means I can play. So, you can assign uh, all of these to your knobs and faders. You can assign all your drums to your pads, okay? And your keys, as long as you're using the correct MIDI channel, which this is set up for MIDI channel one, my MIDI controller. So MIDI channel one on my lead retro mono is perfect. It's all set up just right, okay. So what if we're, we're not using contact? What if we're using something different? Let's check out Urge Drums. Okay, Urge Drums is a really simple, uh, I believe it's an 808, uh, 808 drum sampler. And when I hit my pads, nothing happens. Okay, and that is because this is set up for MIDI channel one. If I hit my keys somewhere, somewhere in here, yeah. Now I'm hitting my keys, okay, but that, that's not what we wanna do. The simplest way to, to change this is to just go through and change all of your MIDI channels to 10. Okay, Urz Drums is also especially nice 
uh, not every free uh, drum VST has as many options, but Urs Drums also allows you to change the note value because uh, you'll notice if you have a listen, I'm going to count off. Pad one, nothing. Pad two, nothing. Pad three, nothing. Pad four, nothing. Pad five, there's one. Pad six, nothing. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. I didn't change any of these to 10. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. I am not going to edit this damn video. That is entirely too much work, my friends. So after we change all of these to MIDI channel 10, which I've done earlier, you'll notice pad one, nothing. Pad two, nothing. Pad three, okay, that's our crash symbol. Pad four, claves. Pad five, pad six, pad seven, pad eight. Okay, so pad one and two are completely empty. Well, you can assign a second kick or a second snare here just by changing the note value to what pad or pad one or pad two is. Now, you don't have to open up your manual to see what it is. The easiest way to do it is to just record, control R, or you press this button down here, okay? And then hit pad one, a couple times, pad two, a couple times, stop it, open up your MIDI file, and hit Alt-3. Oh, sorry, Alt-2. Okay, you hit Alt-2, and this tells you that 48 and 45. 48 and 45 are free. So, we open up Urs Drums, and we will tell it that we want note 45 to be the clap. It's really quiet, but you can see here that now the clap is assigned to pad 2, and then 48, which is our blip. I don't think there was a blip here, was there? No. So let's assign one of our blips to pads 40 or pad 1. Change that to 48. And now our blip. And now we have 1, 2, 3, all the way to 8. Okay. Now, one thing I noticed is that my pads are not incredibly sensitive. And I can probably change that in the uh, in the with the PC editor program, but you know this is more of a sketch pad than something that I'm going to use for uh, real uh, recording or or anything like that. So what we can do to make this always 100% uh, volume is you're going to add MIDI. So sorry if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you've got to right click here or uh, double click there and you're going to search for MIDI, and then you're going to look for Velocifier 2. Okay, Velocifier 2. And what you do is leave everything the way it is, except you want to change your input channel to 10. You want to change your base velocity to 127, and then move this first. So the MIDI is going to come from your MIDI controller. It's going to be a pad and the pad's velocity is going to be, well here it's a hundred percent, but your pad's velocity is going to be whatever it is. And then when it goes into Velocifier, it's going to make it 127, which is 100 percent velocity. And then it'll go into Earth Drums. And that way, when I hit it really softly, it's the same, or when I hit it really hard, it's the same. And it's easier to get a sketch down if you can actually hear what you're doing. Right? Okay, so that's using your MIDI controller with a drum machine, various drum machines, um, and uh, synthesizers. But let's try something different. Okay? So, first, let's record us a little drum beat. Okay? Not the greatest drum beat in the world, but it still plays. You can have a listen. Okay, so 
The great thing about a MIDI controller that has sliders, faders, knobs, and buttons is that you can assign them to do different things. You don't have to think just in terms of synthesizers or drum machines. Okay, I'll give you one great example. Let's add some reverb to our machine. Okay, uh, one particular reverb that I like is reverberate. Reverbate, sorry. Huh, I've always pronounced that wrong. And what we want to do is we want to increase the room size, okay? So that you get something that sounds like this. Okay? But we also want to be able to shoot that right back down. Okay? So, move it around, parameter, learn, and let's assign that to knob number 4. And you can see that is control change 12. Okay. And if you look, I'm turning knob 4 all the way down, all the way up. Okay. Then press play. nice. Now, uh, because this only has four faders, I'm not going to show you how to control things like this or this. Most uh, MIDI controllers are not made for that. What you want to get is a control surface, but uh, there are also many other things you can do. Just have a look on the internet, have a look on uh, YouTube, check out some tutorials, and uh, have fun with your new toy.